Hey you guys, welcome back to Montevue. Today we're gonna to be going over a walkthrough of the entire Montevue Go mobile application. This video is gonna be in three parts. Part one, we're gonna cover the live view. Part two is going to go over the playback section of the Montevue Go app. And part three is gonna cover the remaining aspects of the application. So again, this is part one, the live view, and let's get into it. We're gonna open up the main screen. Now, keep in mind, we do have a video that shows you guys how to add an NVR to this program. So that is the one thing we will not be covering in this video. Once we get to the home screen here, we'll know that we're there once it says home on top. And you guys notice I have one NVR added to my system already, which is displayed down here with these pictures that says Montview. Now, the first thing we're gonna see is the symbol in the upper left corner. And what that does is when you press it, it actually changes the layout of how your main menu interacts. So you can go from more of a picture thumbnail view to a list view. If you have multiple NVRs, this can be a lot more useful. Next, we have our spyglass in the upper right corner. This is a search button. When you press this, you are able to search through multiple cameras or NVRs that you have added to the system. Finally, you have our plus button in the upper right corner. This you would use to add any sort of device to this program, whether it be a standalone camera or an NVR, this is where you would go to do that. Okay, so getting into bringing up the cameras. When users first download this program, when they go to try to access live or playback, you'll be hit with this message. Basically because this program uses a lot of data, because your cameras push out a lot of data, it can be very taxing on your guys' data plans if you're not using Wi-Fi. So this message will come up just warning you that that's the case. And of course you can select here to play regardless whether you're on a Wi-Fi network or not. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna hit continue. So go ahead and press the plus button on this screen. And you'll notice when we do, we are shown a list of devices. Now any camera or NVR you have added to this mobile device will show up in this list. And any NVR you click on will show any camera associated with that once it's selected. So right now I just want to bring up my PTZ camera. So I'm going to select my Montevue NVR and then I'm going to select my PTZ camera. And you'll notice it loads up fairly quickly right away. Okay, once your camera is loaded up, you've got a couple options here. Now the main thing is I can double tap the image with my finger and this will make it a full screen view. My second option is I can view more than one camera at a time. So if I want to add a second camera to this equation, I simply just have to hit the plus button on the upper right corner. And then again, just like my first camera, I'm going to choose a second camera under Montevue. All right, once it's loaded up again, I can bring this into full screen while maintaining my original camera, just like so. And when I minimize it, it goes back and brings up both cameras again. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to full screen my PTZ camera just to show you guys the results. So the first button we see here is a pause button. This is just what it looks like. If you hit this, it will pause your live view of that camera. And then once you hit play again, it will resume the live feed. The next button, it's either gonna say SD or HD. Here we're choosing the quality of image. Now we always recommend SD, this is standard definition, simply because you are on a mobile phone which is not designed or have the processing power for high definition. And because your data is being sent over the internet, high definition can sometimes take a little bit longer to load. So for the fastest live loading times, we recommend the substream or standard definition indicated by SD in this location. You will see HD if it is running the high definition version of this. There's nothing wrong with it. Just keep in mind that your loading times may be significantly longer if you're trying to load the high definition over the substream standard definition. Our next button we see here is a little speaker icon. If it has the X in front of it, this means that your audio is off. So if your camera is equipped with a microphone, you are able to press this icon in order to hear what your camera is recording for audio. Keep in mind that it is possible to activate this even if your camera does not have a microphone, you just simply will not hear audio as a result of that. The camera will continue to actually record that audio. This is simply just to hear it during the live viewing phase. The next icon we see here is how many screens we would like to view. Now keep in mind this is going to be on a smartphone so it's likely your screen space is going to be somewhat limited. You can have up to 16 cameras viewing at once, uh, but you know obviously it's going to be quite difficult to see any details 
but uh, this is possible to do upwards of 16 cameras on a single screen. And finally, uh, the last icon on this row is going to be our orientation of our screen. If we click it, it will throw everything to the side, which does give us a slightly larger viewing platform for our cameras. Um, but as you'll notice, we lose some of our controls. So in order to get those controls back, we just have to simply turn our phone and it gives us our controls back. Some of the icons we have on top here, uh, the house icon, the home that will take you back to the home screen. The next one to the right uh, looks like the settings wheel. This is the settings for this particular camera. Uh, keep in mind the NVR settings will override these, but this is how you would change a stream setting or another small feature uh, included in this little settings list. The icon in the upper right corner looks kind of like an arrow with some lines. This is a particular button that will allow you to start a live view from multiple sources. Uh, so if you guys have multiple NVRs or standalone cameras added to your Montevue Go mobile device, you're able to pull up images from each of those cameras onto a single screen. Uh, there are another, other ways to do this, but this icon allows you to do it while you're in the live view options. All right, so moving on to the row of icons below, the one on the far left looks like it has a film reel in it. And this button will actually take you to the playback menu and options for the particular camera that's loaded into the live view. From here, you can look at any previous footage recorded by the camera, as well as trim and export footage straight to your phone from this menu. We are gonna get into exporting and trimming clips once we get to the playback section, but this is a quick route to there from the live view. The next button we see here is going to be our screenshot button. It is indicated by a photography camera as the icon. And what you do here is simply just press this button and it will save a still image of whatever you have on screen at the time. As soon as you take a screenshot, it gets saved right into your phone storage. The next icon looks like a microphone. This is used for our two-way audio feature for cameras that have that ability included. This is our doorbell or our two-way active deterrence camera. Once you press this, it establishes a call to your camera, and then you can effectively have a conversation with whoever's on screen. Keep in mind that your camera's audio microphone needs to be turned on in order to hear them, but it should establish a two-way communication with you and the camera. The next symbol looks like a camera icon. What this does is it actually records the video that I'm currently watching in my live view. And you'll notice as soon as I press that icon, I get a little recording indicator in the upper left corner. And this will record up until the point I press that icon again to stop my recording. Any of the times that I captured are automatically exported into my phone and I can find them in the files section. Finally, our last icon kind of looks like a broken up window. Um, what that does is it clears out any cameras that you have in your live view and wipes the slate clean to select more cameras. So if you ever have just too much going on and you want to sort of restart, you can go ahead and press this button and it'll wipe out your live view. Okay guys, our final set of icons can be found once we click on these two little white arrows just beneath the microphone button. So out of these five icons underneath the white arrows, we're going to see this little star icon on the far left. This is a favorites. You are able to create a favorites list within this mobile application. And if you have a particular camera brought up, clicking this star will add this camera to a favorites list of your choice. The next icon looks almost like a controller pad is exactly what it is. It is the controls for your PTZ camera. So because I have a PTZ camera here, you'll notice I select this and it gets out this really cool little joystick. And between that and a couple of these other icons, you can move your PTZ cameras around. Keep in mind there is a very, very slight delay simply just because you're going over the internet, but it also gives you a couple more controls. One of the icons we see below the joystick is a magnifying glass with a plus symbol. This will orientate your guys' zoom level on your PTZ. So if I click that, you'll notice on the screen in the lower right corner, I get a plus and a minus zoom. That of course will allow me to zoom in and out of my video, as well as maintaining my joystick operations. So you can do both of those at the same time. The next symbol down there next to the magnifying glass is our iris. Now because all of our cameras have autofocus, this, this button generally will not do much for you. However, you can uh, open or close the lens just a little bit 
try to get some focus in there. Finally, the last symbol we see down here is a flag. Now what this indicates is your preset locations. So if I click this flag, I get a little number scroller. And on this camera, I do have two different presets. So if you'll notice, I select preset one and hit the check mark. No matter where my camera is, as long as I hit this button, it will automatically take it back to preset one. This is a pretty cool feature. So if you see this little demonstration, how that works, it can be very, very useful for users. All right, guys, moving on to the final three icons of the live view. This next one, the very middle icon, is going to be our fisheye control. This is only going to be applicable for our fisheye cameras. Now what it does is you'll see I'm going to load up our fisheye camera. And as soon as I press this fisheye control, it's going to give me two options. This first one is probably my favorite. It basically allows you to swim around inside the camera using your fingers to control the screen, swiping left, right, up, or down. And as you can see, I can kind of sort of dive in and I can zoom in to all these different aspects of this room using this one single camera. This is probably my favorite feature of this application. The other button we see here divides the fisheye into different views so you can get kind of a full view. And as you can see here, my quadrants are split into three different ones. And on this upper left corner, it shows you what portion of that fisheye this quadrant covers. So that pretty much covers the fisheye. In order to deactivate this, you simply just press the fisheye button again, and it turns off that function. So the next icon kind of resembles a windshield with a bit of a wiper blade, and that's precisely what that is. So our manufacturer Dawa does make cameras that come with actual wiper blades for the lenses. Unfortunately, we just uh, we don't really have this type of camera available. If you happen to get a Dawa camera with a wiper, this function would work for that. As far as Monteview cameras go, this icon and option will not be available. So you can pretty much just skip over that one. The final icon, this little light bulb. Now this one's important for our active deterrence cameras. What this does is it controls the alarm so that you can activate your alarm or your lights simply with a push of a button. So you'll see here, all I need to do is press the light bulb icon and it's gonna give me two options. The one on the left is going to activate my floodlight or my strobe light for my active deterrence camera. And then the one on the right is going to activate the siren. Now, both of these features will stay on until I deactivate them with my thumb. So keep in mind, if you do turn on your alarm, it is incredibly loud for whoever's standing next to that camera. So just be sure you deactivate it before leaving this page. And once you're done activating or deactivating your alarms, you simply just need to press this little X button in the upper right corner to make that menu go away. All right, guys, so I believe that covers all of the live view portions of the Montevideo Go mobile application. The next part is going to cover our playback and part three is going to cover all the other aspects and settings of this application. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys on part two, and we appreciate you choosing Monoview.